Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We hope you're having a great day today because we're about to go into an analysis of the daily newspapers. And uh, good luck. We have uh, Liboros Sharma, legal practitioner, here with us to help us make sense of the papers. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Let's uh, kick off with the Punch newspaper. This one says, petrol price may hit 190 naira as oil nears $60. 17.03 billion liters of fuel consumed in 13 months, NNPC. Ekiti, Ondo, deploy Amotekun in forest, boundaries against herdsmen. Ondo tax force combs forests for errant herdsmen. No killer herdsmen in Ekiti forest, and that's according to Fiamese aid. Cryptocurrencies breed illegal activities raise risk, and that's according to the CBN. And below here on the front page of the Punch newspaper, it says, winners pastor jailed for stealing churches $90,000 and 4.5 million naira. Abga tackles Ngigi as minister calls Obiano idol governor. Again, bandits raid Kaduna communities, 19 killed, houses burnt. NMA attacks health workers unions, says Juhesu Environs. Suspected herdsmen slaughter farmer on Ugun farm. And pregnant cop, Ekiti Su's IG, says police regulations violate constitution. And those are the top stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, Mr. Libro Sashama. Is there no forgiveness in the church? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there no forgiveness in the church <laughs> that's a topic for you know uh, one hour discussion <laughs> first thing the, um, what caught my attention on um, the punch newspaper this morning is the protest um, in uh, Miramar uh, over the, the coup and then um, you know if that happens in Nigeria today Will there be such protest? Our leaders should be asking themselves. Will the people come out to say, no, we are protesting democracy. We should defend democracy with our blood. Will that happen? Genuinely That's, or sponsored? No, genuinely. This, from the pictures you're seeing, that doesn't look sponsored. Will Nigerians come out like this to say, yes, we want to defend them? That's the question our leaders should ask themselves. But I'll leave that. Um, the issue of um, petrol price. It's coming again. The government had said, when the dollar went down, we said, oh, because the dollar is, um, is low, the pri when the price of, um, sorry, when the price of um, petroleum product, crude oil price went down, we said because it was, the price was low at the international market, and because of the exchange rate, we had to pay more. Now the price had gone up. Nigerians would still need to pay more because of the exchange rates. And then you ask, last, um, sometimes um, a few weeks back, we talk about NMPC spending um, money on four refineries that were not, that didn't produce a drop of oil. That's resources gone down the drain. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, we, because of the fluctuating price of oil and the international market, we also need to pay more. Ipman, uh, Moman and NMPC are already saying, Ipman and Moman on one side had said, look, the price must go up because looking at the price now, $59 per barrel, and um, with the exchange rates, that the price should be $190-$200. NMPC is saying, well, it's too uh, premature, except uh, the PPMs, uh, PP. Uh, uh, ROA will come up with a pricing template, but we should be mindful of the fact that it has been deregulated. How do you come up with a pricing template for a product that has been deregulated? Is there a pricing template for tomatoes in the market? You know, so that's the big question why people are asking, are you sure we are truly operating a deregulated you know, economy or product in, in as far as the petroleum product is concerned, coupled with the fact that you... You're talking about deregulation, and then you still have equalization pricing. You know, so until 
we start refining our products here, or at least refine our local consumption, will continually remain at the um, beck and call of the fluctuating pricing at the international market and the dollar rate. Last year, the president commissioned modular refineries. So do you commission refineries that are not producing locally when it is still an MPC that is importing you know, the product? And so it will be dependent on the availability of the, of the dollar. On, that's on one side for time. Every day you pick up the newspaper now, there must be one problem of insecurity or the other. A Moteco, headsmen, um, militant raid, uh, community in Kaduna, and you know, all of this. And yet, it is very convenient for people to excuse Mr. President, whose buck stop at his table, or to say, no, we shouldn't ethnicize this crisis. We shouldn't make it look... The president should be aware that gradually his dear ethnic group is gradually becoming, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's gradually becoming an endangered species. There are genuine Fulani people who are going about their business. There are genuine headers who are going about their business. But because of the, the, the um, uh, behavior of some few of their people. Even the Sultan of Sokoto said it. Out of every 10 headsmen or kidnappers, seven are Fulani. He identified that fact. And, and so, if the president wants to protect his tribe, if he loves them so much, so also recently, uh, Kao Baraje also, you know, um, um, uh, gave an expose of what is leading to the crisis now. That these were people that they imported. If the president so desired to protect his tribe, the time to act is now. And then quickly, lastly, on the IGP. The IGP, if you look at the electoral, uh, the constitution, and you look at the police acts from section 7, subsection 3, that talks about who must be an IGP, a serving police officer, to section 7, subsection 6, and there is a proviso in that subsection 6, in section 18, subsection 8, that you must stay within 35 years or 60 years, as the case may be. Do you bring a man from retirement to come be the IG of police, contrary to all of the position, uh, provisions of the Police Act and the Constitution? And then, lastly, okay. what have you been waiting for that you now need three months extension to, to sit down and do the right thing? All so right. these are the questions, really. Let, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. Um, and see what we can find. There's uh, something in cryptocurrencies that we can see there that I hope that we'll start with. Uh, the CBN says cryptocurrency is illegal, used for money laundering and terrorism. Bandits kill 19, raise houses in two Kaduna local government areas. Earned allowance, federal government owing varsity workers over 150 billion naira. And also, NNPC recorded 13.4 billion naira trading surplus in November 2020. Um, AU must be reformed to stay relevant, says President Mohamed Buhari. And also, Fulani heads men not responsible for school burning in Kogi State, says the governor. A few others, why we can't confront kidnappers, Edo police. Uh, Fenifere, Sokapu and others demand new constitution. Uh, two dead in uh, Ilubu, uh, Ilubu and Eri, or Shunland uh, dispute crisis. We also see Zamfara APC resolves crisis, speaks Yari as leader. APC chairman killed in Benue State. I'm, I'm rushing through because of time. So let, let's start with the cryptocurrency um, discussion that, of course, uh, the CBN has uh, made, made it stand known. Yeah, um, while I agree that the CBN might have a point, but um, what they should also realize is, you know, you don't just, what we do here, we just bring down the hammer heavily on any innovation and say, oh, this will create a crisis for us and it's used for illegal activities. I agree. Every innovation, including your Naira, including your Naira and the dollar, you know, if care is not taken, people can use it for money laundering, they can use it for the same thing that you are accusing those dealing on cryptocurrency of. But what you do is to ensure that you put structures in place 
because it's an innovation that you can't just wish away. It has come to stay, it has come to stay. What you do is you put structures in place to ensure that you guard against you know, people who would want to use it for illegal activities. But when you do not even know what to do, um, that's why, for me, I think it is high time we begin to look for CBN governors that um, it's a bridge between the old and the young, uh, between analog and um, digital. What you have now are still analog people, you know, in digital environments. It will be difficult for them to understand this digital kind of trading. And is, so, it, is it lack of understanding or, or there might be something behind these decisions that we're not aware no, of? No, for me, I think um, no matter what is behind, you know, first, they, they are so much in a hurry to protect the, the banks that they also forget that there are opportunities behind this, that if, if the banks also takes time to understand, they, before you know it, they go into some of these businesses. But because they don't even want to understand at all, or they don't understand, or because of fear, because of their analog way of, of reasoning, they just believe any new innovation that is coming digitally is a threat to the analog, to the existence of the analog structure. And so it must be banned without actually understanding it and how they can, what are the, the good side of it that you can actually take out. We don't do that here. And so the pressure you get is that cryptocurrencies like MMM or like all these wonder banks and, and so it should be, you know, done away with. Right. That's not it. Government needs to truly, you know, sit down, understand, take out the shaft, and then retain the good part of it, and you know, reform it, in a reform the oppression in as far as your country. No, is and concerned. also gain from it. Let, let's move yeah, to quick, the quickly. Okay, go um, ahead, please. Um, uh, there is um, a topic also I wanted to talk on. Um, on the headlines there, uh, sorry, let Was me... Was that the uh, AU or the uh, bandits yes, once the, again? Yes, the AU, on the AU, um, the president saying that... Um, the African Union must be reformed to yes, stay relevant. the African Union must be reformed to stay relevant. I had consistently also said that, truly, if you look at the last one year, what, what um, as far as Africa is concerned, and all of the issues especially as regards the, the pandemic, what has been the position of the AU in as far as the pandemic is concerned? Nothing, nothing, apart from heads of um, um, uh, AU, heads of uh, government meeting, you know, and then they made a discourse and issue a communique, and it ends there. What has been the position or the step taken by the AU to ensure that Africa contributes to the development of a vaccine? Nothing. They are doing it individually. And coming from President Muhammad Buhari, AU must reform to remain relevant. The first thing I expect him to do also is to go back to your country, reform your country also to be re relevant in AU, and then champion the reformation. All you know? right. Charity begins at home then. Yes, exactly. The Guardian, our last paper for today, says government, government needs 2 trillion naira to immunize over 200 million Nigerians may spend 921.2 billion naira on 140 million people by 2022. Logistics, three times cost of procuring vaccines, says PSN. Engage consultants, public health pharmacists to reduce cost. Why Nigerians will return PDP in 2023 by Wiki. Ikiti Suza GP over dismissal of pregnant police women. Devolution of power, solution to Nigeria's problems, says Agbakuba. Bandits kill 19 persons in Kaduna. Niger Delta stakeholders forced relocation of DPR to Abuja. Mr. Liberos Oshama, let me bring your attention to this first story here on Ni Nigerian government needing about 2 trillion naira to immunize over 200 million Nigerians. I don't know if you saw that misinformation, so to speak, over the weekend with... Um, the news that Nigeria had been disqualified from receiving the vaccines and the yes, WHO coming out to say that's not true, that Nigeria, in fact, received the largest share of COVID-19 vaccines. How do you now tie that with this, this headline here saying Nigeria needs as much as 2 trillion naira uh, for vaccines? Um, you see, everything that comes here, we must find a loophole around it because people must chop. That's the first thing. That's why no matter how good a proposal is, you take to government, the first thing is, what is in it for me? 
And so it's the same thing with our health system, the same thing with the vaccine. You know, if you ask them to break this down, now, how you arrive at this, you find that there are a lot of missing links. And then secondly, yeah, it is true that the logistics, storage, you know, will be very expensive considering the climate that we are in. But since they've been talking about this vaccine and the storage, other countries have put structures in place to ensure that distribution, even last week we talked about, you know, logistics. What have we done or what are we doing to ensure that distribution and storage, you know, is not a problem so that you don't give people expired vaccines? You know, what are we doing? Nothing. We'll always look at the monetary part of it. And then quickly, uh, Melissa Bakuba talks about devaluation as the problem. You know, that was why I said Buhari needs to come back home, you know, restructure before you can now say, yes, we had similar problem. Nigeria is a microcosm of, you know, the large African macro. So um, we have, you know, We've done, done this, this to remain relevant and so we can push reformation agenda. And then, um, sorry, APC registration, um, continuous registration, with what, um, oh, not... That was not the Daily Independent, so we're running out of time. Um, then, sorry, the bandit killed 19 in Kaduna. Just last week, Erufai was talking about peaceful coexistence. And now, again, fresh attack in Kaduna. And then you, we had asked, you know, what did you do? Why all of a sudden? Why are you so interested in this piece all of a sudden? But your statement before now were not. So it is not just about making statement. You also take actual step. This should force us now to back to that restructure and ensure that all you right. know the governors are truly in charge of security in their states. Absolutely. All right, uh, Liberal Sushama, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. You're still um, with us, so we're going to take a break from you and come back to you in a bit to have uh, other discussions here on The Breakfast this morning. Stay with us. Coming up next, we tell you what happened today in history on, uh, on this day many, many years ago. Stay with us.